I cannot leave now. This door is locked. Is Farley afraid of being interrupted suddenly? Coffee, it's still hot. Cigarettes, an ordinary, inexpensive brand. A press card. Osmond Farley. It's his overcoat. I must go out for a while, Miss Jean. I won't be long. Ask my appointments to wait and send this message as a matter of urgency. Mr. Osmond Farley, I presume. Messrs. Holmes and Watson. What a surprise. What is there so surprising about being visited by the targets of your slander? I never slander. I inform. You will have to accept the consequences of these articles, Mr. Farley. Those words sound like a threat, Mr. Holmes. I never threaten. I merely warn. You don't frighten me, Mr. Holmes. I know all of your little secrets. Soon, all of London will find out what really hides behind the facade of the impeccable detective. Thanks to my work, the whole world will discover the true Sherlock Holmes. Gentlemen, I don't wish you a good day. What a bore! Even to the point of refusing to shake our hands. Which means that we can avoid having to wash them. Did you notice the crumbs on his jacket? He had just finished eating and his hands will be covered in grease, the same as his mouth. Slovenly habits. That's quite disgusting, Holmes. Do not be deceived, Watson. The workmanship in those tailor-made clothes indicate that he is a man who takes pride in his appearance. If Farley has left without brushing off his jacket or washing his hands, then it is because he spotted our approach and wished to avoid us at all costs. But why? We will find out by searching his office. The secretary will stop you. Please reassure me, Holmes, you don't intend upon knocking her out? Only if we exhaust every other viable alternative. I cannot leave now. The secretary is occupied in sending a telegram via their electric telegraph. Farley asked that she should do so before he left. We must find a way of interrupting the transmission, which will oblige her to go to the telegraph office in Kensington. It will take her some time to get there, and if we add on the time it takes to send the telegram and then return here, we should have ample time to search the office without being disturbed. I suppose it's unnecessary to point out the illegality of this search? I'm afraid so. This is an electric box. Interesting. I need a tool to remove the lid. This hanger has a large iron hook. I can hear an electrical humming. The secretary is using the electricity supplied by this switch. Let us see if I can cause a short... There we are. It is simplicity itself. Oh, that's just too bad. Get out quickly, Watson. I'm going to hide here. The way is clear. Let's go, Watson. Here is Farley's secretary's telegram. 
Nothing special here. The secretary has just changed the typewriter ribbon. There are smudges of dark blue ink. The ribbon is missing from this machine. A page of this notebook has been torn out. We can only see the title in shorthand and today's date. It's a message that the secretary must send urgently. I'm going to recopy it. You can read shorthand? You never cease to amaze me. Were you a secretary before becoming the great Sher? Perhaps, perhaps. But no, a man must have his secrets. I can make out the marks, but I need something to bring them to light. I can make out the marks, but I need some... A makeup case with a good brush. Judging from all the notes on the board, our reporter is an assiduous and organized worker. A horrible story, and rather a strange one. Here's what is strange, an attack of collective insanity. A photograph of Prince Woodville. Farley is evidently also interested in this affair. A bunch of keys. A telephone. A technological marvel. A number was written next to it quite recently. A fine, educated hand. Holmes, this number seems very familiar. Yes, but let us dial it to be sure. Miss, get me 1313, please. It is Scotland Yard, of course. I'm beginning to understand. Lucky you. Our man left his sandwich unfinished. Someone closed the curtain as though he wanted to maintain his privacy. This armchair is out of place. This ashtray is worth examining. The cigar end is still hot. This ash comes from an ordinary, well-known brand of cigarettes. It is still warm. This cigar is of a fine quality. It must be very expensive and difficult to obtain. And it is not even finished. What a waste. Farley was not alone when we arrived at his secretary's office. You are thinking of the owner of the cigar. Yes, the reporter smokes ordinary cigarettes. Can you smell the subtle scent of gingerbread? That is the characteristic odor of a Habano Clarissimo. Our mysterious visitor is a rich man, Watson. This category of Havanas is exorbitant, and I cannot imagine a cigar lover crushing out such a marvelous smoke before finishing it. Since we saw no one leaving the building, 
That must point to a secret exit somewhere. How are we going to find it? By retracing Farley's steps from the moment before we arrived. Look, this room is teeming with clues. make out the marks, but I need something to bring them to light. I understand what you want to do. It's an... I can see what has been written. Please write it down. Very well, Holmes. key is still in the lock. This book has fallen down from the shelf. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. My word, it's my stories about your investigations. A real investigative reporter must have read them, my dear Watson. My adventures have fallen from this shelf. This paper only just escaped the flames. But who is this note about? And who wrote it? I will deal with it later. I wonder which drawer the secretary was interested in. The DF drawer, of course, the one in the message that we deciphered from the secretary's desk blotter. Closed. The DF drawer, of course, the one in the message that we deciphered from the secretary's desk blotter. Closed.
the DF draw. There are a lot of cards. How to find the right one? These blue stains come from an old typewriter ribbon. This card has been removed recently. This card has got grease marks on it. The reporter made them. Apparently, he's making inquiries about Prince Woodville, too. But where do you come into all this? Look, if we pull the curtain a little, we can see out into the street. Farley consulted a card while he ate, which was given to him by his secretary just before she changed the ribbon on her typewriter. The reporter's greasy fingerprints are all over the card. When he went to file it away, he glanced automatically out of the window and saw us in the street. He closed the filing cabinet and rushed to lock his office door. In his haste, he pushed his chair aside, but didn't think to return it to its place. Precisely. He then hurried to tell his visitor of our arrival and showed him the way out. He then threw a piece of paper into the fireplace. But we still don't know how the cigar-smoking visitor departed. The answer lies in the direction the reporter took, Watson. At a certain moment, he would have been in a place where he had no logical reason to be. Look at our deduction board, and then let us go to the place where the reporter should not be. Perfect. Yes, Watson. In his haste, Farley dropped this book, taking it from the shelf. Let's search this place. There's a control box built into the filing cabinet. This box must open the secret door. We don't know the combination, Holmes. The answer is perhaps within the question, my dear fellow. That's not right. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Let us go and look at this secret exit, Watson. Chance has smiled upon us, Watson. This hat was almost certainly abandoned by our mysterious visitor. Imagine the scene. In his hurry, the cigar man drops his top hat. The door closes. 
The hat is caught beneath it. Fearing above all that he should be discovered, he does not attempt to retrieve it, instead preferring to flee. Who would take such action to avoid meeting us? I cannot tell as yet, but it is certain that he carries the advantage of knowing us. We must discover his identity in order to redress the balance, and this hat will help us. Let us return to Baker Street. Let's hope that an examination of this top hat will reveal to us the identity of its owner. It will, you can be sure of that. For once, I must insist that you allow me to work alone, Holmes. As you wish. Take your time. I will examine this hat at my work table. This hat is of an exceptional quality. The man who owned it is wealthy. heat marks and a strong smell of tobacco. A cigar smoker, which confirms that this hat belongs to the reporter's visitor. Slight scratch marks. This hat was made to measure by a well-known hatter located near the Old Bailey. His hair is graying and judging by the odor, he puts camphor on it. He is probably in his early fifties. Slight scratch marks. The man wears glasses, and whenever he puts them on, he grazes the sides of his hat. This would suggest that he is educated and long-sighted, rather than short-sighted. Someone has changed the ribbon for another, more modern one, which shows a certain taste for current fashions. Not a mistress, but someone who pays attention to details. This man is married. I now have an excellent description of the man that I am looking for. The journalist's mysterious visitor is in a profession highly placed on the social scale. He is rich and married. He must have called Scotland Yard in Farley's presence. He frequents the law courts from which he makes his purchases. This man is a judge. Let us look through my files to see if I can identify this judge. I have a memoir on the most influential judges. I have found my file. I must place it on my work table. It is him, Judge Beckett. Have you discovered the top hat secrets, Holmes? Watson, this hat belongs to Sir Coots Beckett, a judge of the court at the Palace of Justice in London. A judge? Wait, did you say Sir Beckett? That name rings a bell. Um, yes, that's it. What an extraordinary coincidence. Holmes, I was reading something about him in the Globe Explorer only this morning. Decidedly, this Beckett seems to have solid ties with the gutter press. I bought it from a rascal who ran off without giving me my change. <laughs> I'm sure that I've seen him before, and 
Spare me the details, Watson. Show me the article. So, Lady Beckett is on holiday in Portsmouth. That means her husband is at home alone. Good. We shall pay a courtesy call, Watson. With a little luck, we shall leave with a few Habanos Clarissimo. That you should interest a judge of the High Court isn't surprising. You have solved so many criminal affairs that there are a thousand reasons why a magistrate should be interested in you. But why should this one feel the need to act in shadows? It's true that it's surprising. Perhaps he simply wishes to avoid being seen in the company of this Farley fellow. Mr. Kirby, our local postman, owes me a favor. He'll give me Beckett's address. At this hour, he should still be at the post office. I'll go there, Holmes. Good, Watson, but be quick about it. While you're gone, I'll make preparations for our visit. Sir Coots Beckett, I've got the address. We can go round after a nice cup of tea. Don't get too comfortable, Watson. We're leaving immediately. This is the front of Judge Beckett's property. It's enormous. It looks very luxurious, Holmes. This man has conducted his career brilliantly. Who says that crime doesn't pay? It all depends upon for whom. You never said a truer word, Watson. Now let's try to find a way in. What's that package you are carrying, Holmes? You haven't said a word about it all the way here. Cakes for my old aunt. Your old aunt? Stop pulling my leg, Holmes. If you want a sensible answer, then you should ask a sensible question. Very well. I'm going to ring the doorbell. That should be an appropriate task for someone like me. No, leave it. I'll do it. 